On May 13th, Pope Francis had a few interesting quotes. He noted that prayer is practiced by people of every religion and probably also those who profess none. And in his homily on May 13th, he said that without Jesus, we can do nothing as the branches without the vine. And he, may the Lord permit me to say it, seems unable to do anything without us because the branch bears the fruit, not the tree, not the vine. So those statements are very concerning. A day later on May 14th, he promoted an interfaith prayer service with uh, the Committee of Human Fraternity. It was organized It's the group that promoted the Abu Dhabi document, in which the document said God wills the diversity of religions. Now, the Higher Committee on Human Fraternity, there was an article in Catholic News Agency, and they kind of took a look at the Higher Committee of Human Fraternity, it contains nine members. There are five Muslims, one Jew, two Catholics. They are both members of the Roman Curia. And it contains one United Nations official, Catholic News Agency says, with no stated religion in her biography. The woman is Irina Bokova. She was a former director general of UNESCO, which is an organization of the United Nations. And in her UNESCO bio, it said that she advocates for gender equality. So that kind of says what her religion is. And I think a lot of people are wondering, like, why is Pope Francis promoting this theology contradictory to Catholicism? Why is he signing these interfaith documents and promoting the interfaith day of prayer? And then we found out that there is a Italian Freemason magazine that strongly endorsed Pope Francis's signing of the Abu Dhabi document. This Freemason magazine said that the document was a slow-release drug that could herald in a new era and represent a turning point for a new civilization. And you can read through it. It's on Ed Penton's blog, and I'll link it below. And a lot of people have already mentioned this. But it seems as though Pope Francis is promoting a one-world religion, and the fact that Freemasons are happy with it and they're thinking it's going to be a good thing, it's not a good thing for Catholicism. Catholicism is simply not compatible with Freemasonry. And I think a lot of people understand that. A lot of people realize that Pope Francis is making a lot of concerning statements. And a lot of people are saying that Pope Francis is a heretic who's occupying the papacy. Now, I don't have canonical authority to declare Pope Francis a heretic, but if you would ask me in 50 or 100 years if Pope Francis would be declared a heretic by a future pope, um, every time he speaks, that possibility is becoming increasingly likely. So I think a lot of you guys, the viewers, are speculating that this is moving towards Pope Francis promoting a one-world religion. And that's exemplified by the recent statement of the Vatican that there would be a special year dedicated to Laudato Si. Recall Laudato Si is the Pope's uh, eco-theology encyclical. Now a priest who is the coordinator for the ecology sector of the Department for the Integral Human Development Service... Uh, he made a statement about the year of Laudato Si, and if you want to reference this article, it is linked down below. It is in Italian, so you will need to use the translate feature on your browser to read it. This priest is quoted as saying, There is the Laudato Si chapel, which is almost ready here in Rome, and then will travel around the world. But all this also generates multiple multi-year projects. For example, let's think about starting a seven-year journey with families, with dioceses, with schools, with universities, with hospitals. So let's break this down. He first says there is a Laudato Sea Chapel that will travel around the world. So what is this Laudato Sea Chapel? Is it going to be a statue of Pachamama that travels around the world? Is it going to be a plant that the pagans gave to Pope Francis during the Amazon Synod and he has placed it on the altar? I would say if this happens in a parish near you, you need to protest. We need to reject this eco-theology, and we need to protest this nonsense. Now let's move on to the next section. This priest proposes that they have a seven-year journey. That would be all the time it takes to brainwash the youth into believing this eco-theology actually represents Catholicism. You're going to start out, maybe for kindergartners, that would be like age 5 to age 12, and by then they'd be fully brainwashed. And if you start it for people that are age 10, it takes them to 17 when they graduate from high school. So you're going to focus on telling them how planting trees makes them a good Catholic, and you're not going to talk about the saints, you're not going to talk about rejecting modern culture. And I mean, youth ministry and faith formation, catechism classes are already mostly a disaster in parishes. So now we're turning modernism into paganism. What is worse? So I would encourage you to check out the article and just be aware of what's going on.